Okay, what you're looking at here is an orange X2 um, from 1997. Now it's a pretty original example. The only thing that's been changed, I believe, is the front forks for these Mizuki MX forks. Dual air with internal rebound adjust, and unlike most Mizokis, you've got these beautiful red air, air caps for the top. They usually did gold or black, just black plastic, but these are the red aluminium ones. These forks were in mint condition about seven years ago when I first sold this bike to the customer. Unfortunately, not anymore, which is a little sad. It's only been ridden once in that time as well. The wheel set is Mavic's 221 wheel set with reinforced spoke eyelets and DT Swiss spokes, rocking parallax, parallax hubs, which is pretty cool. V brake, of course, that was uh, very much a thing in 1997. That stanch and scratching on there look nasty. This frame has an FSA pig headset on it, and yes, just in case you're wondering, this frame has been re welded as you can see here. I didn't sand the extra weld material off because I don't want to uh, compromise this thing's strength any more than it already had been. But that weld's definitely uh, holding up. You remember, it was quite difficult to weld because it was uh, quite gassy. This material, so you know, porosity was gone to the top, and it's rewelded about three times. Sanded it off, ground it out, sanded it off, grind it out. But it's held up, you know, to two years of my abuse. Then I sold the thing, and it's still holding up now. Not that it's been ridden much. It's rocking the original stem, I'm not sure how long, I think it's about 120 millimetres, something around there, it's pretty long, 25.4 handlebars on here. It's got the uh, Shimano brake levers on it, although it's rocking SRAM gears, so that's a little strange. The SRAM grip shift, or grip shift as it was known, it wasn't even known as SRAM back then, how about that? Grip, si grip shift ESP FFS, whatever that stands for. 500 with the original grip shift grips on here. There's only one barrel adjuster on this thing, and it's there. The uh, front derailleur, yes, it has a front derailleur. It's a Shimano STXRC, and it appears to be crooked. STXRC crank set on there as well. Note the missing bolt. It has a uh, eight speed Shimano Hyperglide rear cassette, which it seems to need tightening up. And a SRAM SX4 rear derailleur covered in years worth of dust from where it's been sitting in a garage for a long time. I think it might be ridden a couple of times, but not much. I don't think it had this mud guard originally. It's got a crud Joey guard on here. On the Thompson seat post, this thing is rocking. Here, I have a little uh, pulley wheel for help the uh, gears on the front here. Well, that's not really doing much, it's just rubbing on the frame there. So that'll need replacing. The rear shock is somewhat of an interesting one, being a um, Stratos um, unit. Stratos went bankrupt around 2008 due to problems with leaking seals and being sued out of business by Specialized. By some miracle, the seals do not leak on here. Now, they were a good company, but the company that made the seals sent the scale drawings via email to their new factory, and they ended up leaking, so that was a big problem for them. And then they got sued for very questionable passion pattern infringement by Specialized. So that put a lot of people out of work. They were a great American made, Californian made rear shock, all CNC machined of course. Pretty much state of the art for its time. The frame itself on this thing is a unified rear triangle or UART unfortunately, meaning that the suspension does not work very well when you're standing up, which is pretty useless for a trail. And it also runs on nylon bushes as you can see down there. This is an orange frame as well. Orange frame, rocking nylon bushes, how about that? It rode pretty much like a hard tail, it has to be said, but it was very, very quick. On the road, this thing could keep up with a lot of roadies, or I found it could. And people used to comment how fast I was going up hills on this thing. Um, of course, the suspension didn't do anything standing up, so I used to stand up quite a lot for the hill climbing, and it wouldn't bob. <laughs> and people were like, how's he getting up there so quick? Um, yeah, I sold this thing about seven years ago, and um, basically it's uh, here for a tune-up, I believe. I've not really asked much about it, but I can see it needs a few things doing. This uh, cassette's kind of loose. I think it just needs tightening up. Hopefully it's not a free body failure. So we'll look at that again. No, it's not. It just needs tightening. I can see it does. Brake cables. This will need, These are going to need oiling. The blocks seem pretty good. They should do. I think you replaced them and then didn't ride it. Brake cable's definitely going to need changing though. Tyres are pretty shot as well. 
Tire, what tyres are these? WTB 2.1 Wow Pushing the limits man The old Mizoki MX is on the front though Absolutely beautiful forks This originally came from Mountain 2 Xvert which had certainly seen better days when I got it I got about half an inch of travel out of that thing These are 100mm I believe with internal rebound adjustment and Just look at that seat clamp there Isn't that cool? It's a seat clamp that actually works. I wish I could still make these. But no, modern seat clamps are typically absolutely awful. You see that's offset look. It uses an offset seat clamp, so it's like cam lobe design, as in a proper cam lobe design, not just the you know concentric ones you see today on like Marins and things. So you don't get the Land Rover effect where instead of going faster you push the seat post into the frame further and you get lower. Nope, that concludes the video on this thing. Plastic pedals and all. Orange X2 from 1997. I'd still rather ride this than an old Carrera. See you later.